Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Caitlin and I love all things DIY and crafting. Right now, we are in this weird time where we have to stay home. We are forced to use our crafting stash, which isn't a bad problem for me because I need to get through some of that stuff and use it up and finally get to projects that I've had on hand waiting forever. But right now, um, like I say, it's this weird time we're staying home. I know I haven't been putting out as much content because I'm learning to homeschool. My husband's home. All my kids are home. We're kind of compacted and we are just trying to get through this. Obviously, we are blessed to stay home and stay safe and I am wishing all of you all the same to get to stay safe and stay well and try to stay home as much as you can. Me and some of my crafty friends posted a really cute photo on Instagram. You'll have to check out the link down below to see it. We also made this short little video. Stay home for the people. We love. Be creative. Reuse, recycle, repurpose. Craft your stash. Use what you have. Let's flatten the curve. And that was so much fun to put together. So I really hope you all enjoyed that and seeing all of the familiar faces. But staying home, we can't go out to our favorite stores. We can't shop or get out and get inspired by all the trending and decor, which stinks. But um, I love projects like today's video because I'm actually going online and finding inspiration from stores that I usually love to shop at, but trying to make them at home uh, on a budget. And I'm excited to jump on into today's video. I'm trying to make uh, high-end projects inspired by Pottery Barn. So I really hope you enjoy it. You'll have to uh, let me know in the comments down below which one you enjoy the most and what store that you would like to see an inspired by video next. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button and let's jump on into crafting. The first project I'm working on is this two piece uh, decor set. I was inspired by these pieces from Potter Pottery Barn and you can see they have like the nice uh, modern farmhouse look with the metal at the top. So that's kind of what I was going for. I wanted the two frames with a piece of the greenery inside. Um, I knew this would be the tricky part because I wanted everyone be to be able to make this with Dollar Tree items and not have to um, try to paint uh, the greenery on there like I originally thought that I would do. So I decided to make it with some floral pieces and you'll see a little bit later. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is using these smaller rectangular signs. Um, my glass always breaks because I come home and put these in like my craft supply tub and just kind of shifting that around. It just seems like I always break the glass in these but I just went ahead and removed those and then I needed that little metal ring and since we are staying home I couldn't look uh, in the store for something that was circular so I did just kind of shop my crafting stash and the only thing that I could really find was to use the metal from the bottom of the stakes. Now I will save this windmill and use it on another project but to get those metal circles um, I just went ahead and tried to wrap it around a jar. This is a little thick so it is a little bit harder to work with but I was able to get a circular shape and get the metal ring that I was kind of going for. The shower rings were a little bit too small and this is the only thing that I could find that was strong enough to hold up these little decor pieces even though they're light I knew the wire that I had would just kind of bend and not stay in a, cir a circular shape. So I just folded those over. I know the bottom looks a little bit ugly on these but they are going to be hidden behind the sign and I go ahead and cut off the excess wire. I think this video is a perfect representation of kind of like how my brain works during these DIYs. I mess up a ton in this video or things aren't going exactly as planned or I don't have exactly what I need, but this is just real life. So I wanted to be able to share that with you all. Um, the the wall art pieces that I'm kind of being inspired by. I hate to say the word dupe because I'm not trying to recreate the exact piece, but um, the pieces that I was inspired by have like a white background. If I had like a white canvas cloth or fabric that I could put in the background, I think that would be even better quality or higher end looking, but I don't. So right now I'm going to take my white chalk paint and just kind of give a thick coverage 
on this cardboard and you really wasn't um, able to see uh, the cardboard come through the back because I know the texture of the cardboard sometimes comes through if the light hits it right so I was making sure that I did apply this paint really thick and then because I do want to blend in all the textures and just to make this look a little bit nicer I'm using some of my mineral chalk paint I wanted a warmer color just to kind of dry brush in the background and barely give it a little bit of texture While I'm letting my boards dry completely, um, and that was just the cardboard that came in the back of the photo, I don't, or the picture frame, I don't know if I specified that, but I wanted to prepare my little floral greenery. I thought this would be so fun to use a piece of real greenery so that it was 3D, and Dollar Tree has this gorgeous greenery that I think looks like high quality, and I should have just left it as is. Um, I just love to paint and change everything, so I used a couple different shades of green, and I tried to um, dry brush it over the a greenery piece and I just didn't like it. It was too much of a colorful bright green uh, for me, I thought it would dry a lot darker, but it didn't, so I ended up liking the original color of the greenery better, and then I just kind of dry brushed a little bit of the brown over the stem to make it look a little bit more realistic. So you can see side by side, I totally messed that up. I should have just stayed. It would have been a lot less work and um, getting green paint everywhere. So the next thing I'm going to do is try to attach this greenery to the sign. It has a lot of little leaves on it and little pieces hanging off, so it does want to curl up. So I thought it would be best to kind of Mod Podge the entire thing down. But this is like a, a heavier piece uh, just to attach with Mod Podge. So I did end up tacking it in a few places here and there with my hot glue. I wanted the frame to have a nice high quality bronze look to it and I didn't have any bronze uh, spray paint on hand. I would have uh, tried to have picked some up but I ended up using this burnt umber which is a rich dark brown color and it was really thin. That's why I get asked a ton of questions why I, we like to use chalk paint or a lot of DIYers like to use but for myself I just feel like you get so much more coverage. So you can see like the paint was originally gold and you can see that through this frame. So I ended up having to put two to three coats on it just to get a minimum coverage. So I went ahead and after all of my floral pieces had dried to the cardboard, I put it back inside of the frame and then I'm just going to hot glue those metal rings to the top. And because I did have to add a ton of hot glue to get these to hold, I did add a piece of ribbon behind that to kind of keep everything secure and flat down. But this is my version of those Pottery Barn wall decor pieces and I think they turned out so cute. I love the 3D little floral plant um, and how it kind of pops off of there and how it looks with all of my other bronze decor. For the next project, I'm using a couple of these tall glass candle holders. I was inspired by these candle holders from Pottery Barn. They have the wood bottom and then the frosted glass. So that's what originally I was going for. The photo of the Pottery Barn uh, candle holders have like a white tinted top. So you'll see I do attempt that. This is uh, one of those craft fails that I do end up having to do over. So I'm just going to go ahead and speed through it in the beginning and show you what it ends up looking like. So I wanted that wood bottom to look as realistic as possible. If you don't have this uh, faux wood paper at home, you could always paint it with like the truffle brown paint and then just kind of dry brush over it with mineral or black color paint to give it kind of a wood effect. But I luckily had this on hand, so I cut a piece. Um, 
so it would kind of go not halfway up but a little bit more than like a third up the jar and then I can wrap these around the bottom and I think this is gorgeous I instantly loved it and that's all you could do if you wanted to just leave them like that and it already makes them look a lot nicer quality but I really wanted to give it that um, stained or frosted glass effect at the top so I in my mind I didn't research this or anything but I mixed Mod Podge with a little bit of white paint and I thought that that would give it the perfect little milky glass look so that's what I did and I'm using a sponge to kind of make it texturized and just apply this all over the jar and I just thought that this would dry beautifully which um, maybe it's a sponge maybe I should have used a sponge brush instead to apply it a little bit more evenly but after I got it all on there I just wasn't loving the way it dried but I did go ahead and apply my wood uh, paper to the bottom by uh, using Mod Podge and just put a coat underneath of it and then a coat over the top of it I want to do what you want to We can leave and run away Someday Someday While I was letting those dry, I wanted to go ahead and make a little stand for one of them because whenever I put things like this together, I love a little bit of elevation in the back. It just makes everything look like it is meant to kind of go together and not like I just made the exact uh, same things to sit beside each other. So I found one of these wooden circles from Dollar Tree. This is actually called like a wreath ornament and I was so excited that I bought up a ton of these whenever I saw them about a month ago, but uh, I went ahead and filled the little hole in with some wood filler and then I had hot glued these little wooden cubes from Dollar Tree on the bottom because I thought that was what I was going to make and you'll see a little bit later I do change it up, but I go ahead and give this a nice coat of my ink chalk paint which is just a thick black color and painted the entire stand and I think it looked so nice. Okay, so I'll get back to that stand in just a moment, but these is what I had. I love the bottom. I think that the wood was drying really pretty, but the white, like I say, just didn't go up on evenly. This is actually where I tried to peel it off to see if I could even get the glue and the paint off of there, and it actually scratched off a lot easier than trying to wash it off with a wet cloth, but um, so this was time consuming, so I just... Uh, save you the hassle just don't mix white paint in with your Mod Podge uh, like I say I just couldn't it just makes all the flaws show up so much more and I just couldn't get it to look even and nice so I ended up having to start all over I went ahead and removed the wood at the bottom to the little wood paper um, because I had kind of damaged some of that so to start over I do recommend wetting your wood paper first to Mod Podge at the bottom this just makes it have a lot less bubbles it makes it apply easier and uh, just doesn't bubble up and kind of wrinkle more. So I am so happy that I did go ahead and redo this because the paper at the bottom and the Mod Podge looked way better at the top. So I did keep kind of using a damp paper towel and kept going over that and smoothing it and then let that completely dry before I added the second coat of Mod Podge over the top. Okay, so this time I tried to do everything I could to get this better looking so I wouldn't have to redo it again. So I'm using my real stamp brush, which I just felt like applied it more evenly and nicer than me just holding that wrinkled up sponge or folded up sponge. So I dabbed this all over and this is just pure Mod Podge in the satin. I picked it up from Dollar Tree. And then this is what it looks like dried. And this is the effect I was going for. And um, that's on the inside, so I had to clean some of the glue 
glue from the inside off of there, but I love it. I hope it shows up on camera what it looks like in real life, but it just gives it that nice little frosted glass look without it being um, just pure white like I did paint it. So I was liking that so much more. And then I was doing a little bit more research on Pottery Barn's website, and they have like some planner uh, holders that looked a little bit higher quality than what I even even made. It had the little pieces that came up on the sides and I thought those would be perfect size to use to use the wooden building blocks from Dollar Tree. So I went ahead and painted those black and then glued them around the edges. I just made one of these so like I say they can be at different heights but you definitely could make one of these for both and if I was making this you wouldn't have to put those little uh, wooden cubes at the bottom uh, because that just makes it look really busy so I wouldn't add those the next time but I think this turned out so nice looking and high quality and perfect to kind of mimic the Pottery Barn look. In this photo, they are just selling that little tassel rope that's on clearance for $6.99, but I actually loved the little pot that it was attached to, so I don't really have a price to show you what you would have saved or anything on this exact project, but um, just know that that was just for the tassel piece. But I just loved the pot, so I thought that I could try to recreate that using Dollar Tree items. I had picked up a pack of these clear shower hooks, and I am using one of these glass uh, candle holders that are like a unique new shape. I haven't seen these around Dollar Tree very often. Uh, so it was just a perfect shape for this that it gets larger at the bottom, but it needed the little handles at the top. So obviously this is gonna be a, a very cheap version of this. So you cannot pick this up using the handles. I recommend trying something like E6000 or liquid nails or something that, that would apply to glass a lot better than hot glue because we all know if you try to pull on this that it's gonna pop off. So this is something I I'm going to put up high on a shelf. I'm never going to bother it or try to handle it or let anyone, uh, my kids or anything, touch on it. So I feel like it'll be safe. It's just for decor purposes and I'll just keep it up high. But um, I glued these on either side of this little vase and I think it is adorable. It gives it the perfect little shape that I was going for. I'm using some rust oleum and I go ahead and paint that white. You see my fancy little transition there. I worked hard to get that in the same place. But I go ahead and do a couple coats of the white matte paint and then I wanted to make those little tassels for the front so using some of my Dollar Tree jute string as well as some of this brown string I just go ahead and wrap some of the string around my fingers and you will see that I, I knot it at the top and make the perfect two little tassels to hang from the front. I knew that putting just pure jute string around this face wouldn't make it look high quality and then the brown I didn't feel like would really show up that good so I thought it would be fun to kind of mix the two. In the photo it has a couple different tones of the brown on the tassels so that's what gave me this idea to kind of mix these two together but I think it was just a beautiful, a beautiful combination and made it look a lot higher quality using them both together. I didn't want to just tie these around the back of that vase without um, trying to make them dangle in the front like the original photo. So it was a little bit more tricky than you would think trying to get that figured out. So I ended up just having to tie them in the front and kind of end up hiding that ugly knot. And then I was able to take a lighter and very carefully kind of singe um, all of those little hairs away, which makes it look so much nicer.
And then to finish this off, I'm using one of these high quality, nice uh, eucalyptus stems from Walmart. I think these are around $3, but I thought that they just finished it off and gave it a beautiful look. But this is how it came together. I think it turned out really pretty and a great alternative if you are going for the Pottery Barn look. But I enjoyed all of these projects today and I hope you did too, especially since we can't really get out shopping, but we can stay at home and recreate the projects and decor that we love. Thank you all so much for coming along with me today. Like I say, I hope you to stay home, stay safe, and stay well, and do all of the social distancing and everything that's recommended. Me and my family, we are staying home. We are not going out. I am not running to Dollar Tree to make all of these videos. I am gonna be using what I have on hand. So I really hope you enjoy today's video. Uh, you'll have to let me know that down in the comments. Like I say, leave the store that you would love to see an inspired by video from, and I'll see you next time. Happy crafting and stay safe. Bye. Bye.